Hey everyone, welcome back to The War Room, and today I'm going to do my review of El Moravid, I believe I'm saying that correctly, by GMT Games' Volko Runki. I hope I'm saying your name right. Um, this is a game by GMT Games, it's a two-player card-driven game. It's also boasted as a one-player game. Um, I got to do the unboxing, so here's my review. <clears throat> I got to play this a couple times with my guy Joseph Little on Discord, it's a shout out to him. Uh, he taught me the game. I was able to learn this in about a day. Um, if I didn't have a friend to show me how to play, I would say that this is every bit the four point, like one, two or whatever complexity on board game geek. Uh, since I had a buddy to show me how to play, I think that drops down significantly, um, to about maybe 3.5. All right. It's not that difficult. Um, the game is beautiful. Let's talk about the game and, and components. I'm not a fan of stickers on wood, but the wood pieces make sense for this type of game. It's very elegant. The map is very, very well uh, drawn out. It's uh, it's simple. It's, it's simple colors. It looks like something from the medieval times, okay? Uh, and so it fits the theme very well. The theme of the game is very well uh, written. It feels like you're, you're levying and campaigning against uh, medieval forces. So with that being said, um, let's talk about the game itself. So it is a card driven game in a sense you don't get cards in your hand like you normally would for like you know twilight struggle or what have you um you play them as you go you get a whole deck of cards called art of war and the art of war gives you a bunch of options that you can play when you're levying okay when you levy your troops and raising them you can play these cards as an action to do such things um, it could be anything from allowing your troops to have missiles to uh, allowing you to move along the board faster, all kinds of stuff. Um, but the real card driven factor is the command cards. Okay, you'll have a command with a flag of every lord that's on the board. So if you look over here, I'm playing a scenario right now. I'm holding you, sorry. Uh, I have three lords for the beginning scenario for the Muslims. And over here, the Christians, there are several. I got five, okay? And there are cards for literally every Lord. And there's also pass cards. Now, if you've played uh, Star Wars Armada, then this game will be, you'll understand what these commands do. You pick commands, you get to seven for the first part, which is what, the spring, eight for summer, and seven for uh, fall, blah, blah, blah. And you set them to what you want to pop up first. So if you want a particular Lord to pop up, you put him on top and then underneath, underneath like the command coins, like the command tokens for your ships in uh, Star Wars Armada, you set them. And once you set your deck, that's it, that's all. You don't get to change it. So whoever pops up, pops up and you cannot change that order. I, there might be a card that changes that, I'm not sure. I haven't played it enough yet, but once you set your command deck, it's over with. So that is the crucial, the crucial part of this game. If you set it up bad, or you got guys going in wrong directions, or you're, you're, you're setting off the wrong people, it will hurt your game. So you have to be tactical about it. Now, in the first uh, turn of a campaign, you might not know who to set up first. You might be just guessing. But after the second one, you should kind of have an idea who you should be sending off first to deal with whatever problems that the board state tells you is, um, is going on. The Levian campaign system is from Nevsky, and this is the second volume. Um, I've never played Nevsky, but I will say this. This is a very fun game. I like this. Um, you levy, you, you plan, you campaign. Um, the pieces are great. The cards are great. My only complaint on this is, and this is just a very small complaint, the rule book. So the rule book, this is a rule book. It's about, what, 35 pages, all right? You also have a background book, which is about 68 pages, all right? It's very daunting. And a lot of these ideas are abstract, right? So the designer is trying to give you abstract ideas on a rule book to play this game. So let me give you an example. This is one of the easier ones. So if I zoom in a little bit, I don't know if you can see that. Let me adjust the camera just a little bit. We're gonna be focusing in this area right here. So you can ravage areas as you go in Crusade, right? So as this guy has moved in here, he has ravaged a couple of uh, places, those little yellow tokens. And they give you a half a point a piece. 
So they have one point as the Christians for ravaging. All right, now, once I take over Toledo, I would remove all these jihad tokens, which are also half a point to the Muslims. But then these guys flip because now that you've controlled the Taifa or the region, which is where Toledo is located, you know, these guys hate you because you are the overlord that did the ravaging to the places. So you'd flip them like so, and then they become half points to the Muslims. When you read that in the book, it's very, very hard to understand. Um, which is why you need a person to kind of point those things out. Because exactly what I told you is what was told to me. That's not in the book. They don't explain that very well. That, oh, you ravaged the lands. Now that you're their leader, they hate you. Like, they don't... There's not enough designer notes, I feel, in the game. All right? It doesn't mean the game's bad. It just means I don't think there's enough explained. Right? Because you're, you're talking abstract ideas. So you need to explain that a little bit further because not everybody understands that. I'm sure there's people out there, oh, I, whatever, I get the rules. I'm not one of those people. And there's many people like me that don't understand it. So if that's my only complaint, it's not a big one. But if you're gonna pick this game up, reading the rules the first time, you're not gonna understand that right away. Unless you're like one of those people that just can read it and pick it up like that. Um, so having a person to play with, I was able to get this done. I was able to play two um, two full games, no problems. We were we were flying through the turns. It's not a very long game once you know the rules. The sequence of play, of course, as GMC GMT, excuse me, is they're perfect. And this is actually the best sequence of play I've ever seen because it literally goes down the path of everything you need to do, referencing everything you need to do. You flip it over, and there you go. There's your actions for your commands. You open it up. And there's everything for sieging, for battles, and everything. The battles are awesome. Um, basically, the battles are... A movie again, sorry. They're done on this little mat. You put the pieces on here. You take the pieces off of your little lord's um, mats. That's what they have. You have vassals that you can raise. And they go here, and you fight it out. Uh, and basically, it's points. If I have three points of damage to you... Then you get to pick which damages go, unless there's a particular card that changes the rule. And you roll. You roll to see if you've defended against that attack. Simple. Very, very simple. So, um, and, but it's that, that was confusing too. The battles, storming, you could storm, which is a little bit more aggressive. There's more, there's more to this game. Um, in the first scenario, which I've, I've played a couple times now, uh, there's a segment called Call to Arms. It's not even used in the scenario. So I haven't even played the full game yet. But from what I've seen, it's been very, very impressive. And I think that if you liked Nevsky, which I've never played, I heard good things about it. Um, they say that 90% of the rules are in here. There's just a few changes. Uh, but you should be able to pick up Nevsky, go to this almost instantly. So uh, overall, this is a very good game. I love the game. Uh, I enjoy it when I play it on Tabletop Simulator. I love to listen to Crusader King soundtrack. It's really, really um, immersive. And um, I think you will like it too, if you like it. I don't think that anybody's going to want to play this if they're new to these types of games. This will be a very, very heavy to them. Easy to you if you've played games like this before. But to uh, somebody who's new, this will just throw them off the path. I would not, I would not suggest a game like this. So... Good luck to you guys. I hope you enjoy the game and uh, good job, Volko.